In a world of 8 billion people on this planet, the question is, why should anyone live alone? Why should anyone live in separation? Now, the question may come from different topics, different angles, but ultimately, more or less, it will be linked with the pandemic that is being unfolded as of today, and also with a big question that, uh, you know, surprisingly came very fast, and that is, since when does society care that much for uh, the people? I mean, we've been raised in a society where we've been lied about things ever since we were young. We were taught constantly, even by our parents, in their ignorance, that, you know, getting married and, you know, replicating the species and working your ass in a dumb job that doesn't satisfy you is something that should actually, you know, ensure a well-being in our existence. But ultimately, every time we hear different things like this, it's never ever gonna reach any satisfaction in our existence. Now, the point about separation is separation is nothing else than an illusion. Nowadays, we have this breed of people who call themselves independent people. But what is actually an independent person? Well, first of all, person means a personality. And as I've been saying in a previous video, people speak about the personality, right? People speak about the person, not the life force that exists and inhabits that physical body. So it's always that people refer to themselves um, regarding the lies that everyone puts out. Because in the end, the personality is kind of almost entirely a lie. It is made out of everything that we have accumulated. When we were born, there was literally nothing that we had. We had no memory, we had no impressions, we had no feels, but we gathered many of these through time from our parents, relatives, you know, so many people in general, right? And, of course, this also means that technically everything that we know kind of doesn't belong to us and is nothing else than an accumulation from the external. So the point is, as we are doing this, right, we are becoming more and more like the others, while at the same time we are ignoring our true self or technically, the idea of being fully nothing. People identify themselves with all sorts of ideas and points and, uh, you know, visions. And as they do, it's kind of funny because, you know, they identify themselves with that and they believe so much that that is the only way that, well, ultimately, they won't be willing to do anything else or accept anything else. Because... It's not called anchoring yourself in a certain idea, because once someone identifies themselves with something, they already imposed separation within them. Because once someone identifies with a certain point of view, they are never willing to accept anyone, you know, who is different in thinking than them. Why? Because why would they? Right? If someone is convinced that their local football team is the only thing important in their existence, well, there is nothing wrong with that, there is nothing bad about it. But when they see people who support anything else, then they actually might enter defensive mode. Right? Now, this is actually the function of the intellect. And if you can use manipulation, or aka black magic, because that's what black magic is in 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 the entirety of its layers. The point about black magic is how one can turn through any action the energies of someone against that specific someone. So when you lie someone, right, you're allowing or you're turning that person slightly against themselves because they are accepting something, right, which fragments them a bit. You're giving them an opinion which technically is something new that they acquire, which means another fragment, right? The more you accumulate things and the more you end up using your mind, the more you fragment yourself because you're always going to get new ideas and it's obvious that sooner or later some of these will be contrasting. When these ideas are contrasting, obviously you will have slight problems because when you have contrasting ideas, it's like cancer. A part of you turns against yourself and then a war is being waged. 
And when a war is being waged and you're too focused on the internal, right? But the problem is not on the spiritual side, but on the mental side, which are two completely dimensions. Now, the problem is forces from the outside can easily manipulate you. That's, for example, one way, for example, let's say narcissists rule other people or sociopaths. They always create different fragments in the mind and they make them busy in their own mind with all sorts of questions and doubts and wonderings. Meanwhile, they are doing their own propagandas, right? If they can piss you off, they rule you because the one who angers you is the one who controls you, right? If they can put you into ignorance mode, they have won because ignorance means accepting everything without any discernment. Someone calls you an idiot and you fuss about it because you instantly accept it. But what is a belief? Well, a belief means accepting things without any proof, right? So if you accept things without the proof and someone just calls you an idiot, you're going to fuss about it, right? And of course, you're going to become defensive because you theoretically don't want to accept that, but you've already fully accepted it. That's why you fuss about that, right? And, you know, the suffering that you will be felt, right, is nothing else than self-imposed. You are creating all that suffering because ultimately people can call you names all they want, but that's not going to change who and what you really are. Because ultimately, as I said in another video of mine, always trust your talents, don't trust yourself because yourself is very simple. Yourself is just an accumulation of thoughts and ideas in most situations because ultimately what the mind can create is only based on what you know. It's the same thing with imagination, right? So separation is a powerful tool to keep people apart and to keep people in their own minds because it's technically like keeping someone in their own prison. Because when someone believes in their ideas, and again, belief means accepting something without a necessity for proof, well, they have created their own prison. That is why the idea of this society works very well with prisons, right? We all have our own homes where we go, we feel very comfortable, and comfort zone is usually a prison zone. And you also have all the media and the such which have been worked relentlessly towards in order to facilitate people being kept, you know, in captivity more and more, and all that because people work impulsively. They want to see that, they want to see that, right? They want to hear that, they want to listen to the news, they want to connect themselves to, uh, you know, more drama, because people are attracted to drama. And that is the reason why the news also propagates drama, because if that wouldn't sell, well, they wouldn't also publish all the drama, right? Like, what's the only things that you see on the news? Mainly, right? People dying, crashes, you know, people separated, murders, right? And while at a certain level it's not bad to see such cases because ultimately it can help raise people's awareness about the dangers of society, but again, if people concentrate too much about that, which again, it's not necessarily the fault of... Uh, the news, right? But if people focus too much on that, they believe that literally everything is dangerous and that's why people exist on a level of survival. But survival level is also a separation because when you are in survival mode, everyone and everything around is just a tool for your survival, right? Narcissists, for example, live in constant survival mode because they have to preserve the lies in order to keep their personality up. <coughs> And as they do, the point is everyone else is just another tool, right? Or let's say a cow that they can milk their narcissistic supplies from. So as they do, they will also impose separation in a softer or more aggressive way. And well, that's kind of how society works. Because through abuse that happens, especially at the age of childhood, where the child is the most defenseless and, you know, Parents will use these impulsive ways, right, that they are bigger, they are stronger, they are older, so they can do literally everything they want with the child. They don't realize that, well, they're creating little monsters just like them. And at the same time, they are planting seeds that will lead to, you know, the children's hatred towards them. Why? Because, well, if you don't treat your child well, 
then they will hate you. And of course, those people will start, you know, victimizing that they've done so much for the child. But the moment you say that, it's already a separation from your child because you already see them as unworthy. But at the same time, you also saw them as unworthy when you were mistreating them. And all these children that have been mistreated, right, they became parents and again, they did the same thing because people lived in ignorance. And ignorance means just impulse, acting on impulse. So if you are mistreated, you have to automatically mistreat others. If it also goes into narcissistic and or sociopathic spectrums, well, then things can only escalate. And the point is, so many thousands of generations of abuse nowadays are still going on. And the problem is, you know, people easily prefer doing the thing that were inflicted upon them rather than, you know, admitting the more sensitive way that if you had a bad life, at least make the life of the other ones that come much better, right? So the point about separation is, again, ignorance rules it all. Because through ignorance or technically accepting everything but running away from the responsibility, well, ignorance will easily rule everything. Because... Once you believe that you are something, you will automatically uh, disregard, more or less, everything that is not supporting your visions, right? When you are impulsively living, everything that doesn't support your visions is already something bad. So, it's kind of a separation. So, with all these children that's been, you know, that have gone through abuse, now, society is well, kind of the same thing as it used to be in the earlier times. But in the earlier times, right, in medieval times, there was, there were basically no news and people didn't know much, right? Like when you lived in your fortress, you didn't know much, you know, beyond, let's say, the few streets that you would know because, well, you had your own things to do and you had the few people you knew around. And of course, stress and the such were kind of, I would say, the same levels as nowadays. Nowadays, people don't call stress that much because there are a lot of ways to distract yourself. Back in the times, there was a lot of work to do and, well, basically little time to procrastinate. So, <clears throat> as these abuses went on and on and on, it became more and more entrenched into the uh, DNA almost, right? It's karmic structure of our race. And, of course, as this unfolded more and more, the point is it's harder and harder to resist. And, of course, this ultimately is another form of separation because when a parent, you know, they breed, they breed children uh, ignorantly, they will automatically see those children as useless because, ultimately, many people create or, let's say, give birth to children just because their parents and their neighbors are nagging at them, right? It's always that shame that you're a certain age and you're not yet uh, married and, you know, you're not yet having children. It's like, what's the problem with that? In this time, especially, where everything is so volatile and you never know, like, we're basically living the end of the world, almost, it's like, why the heck would you be silly enough to create a child? Like, it's not a murder, it's actually self-preservation, because the moment you have a child, everything slows down. And in this society, it's also very hard to have children, because you're basically living on the edge, right? A job means just over broke, so you're barely at the edge of being broke. Everywhere you go, you're gonna be, uh, you know, paid in the, you know, the least amount of money that is uh, possible, because that's basically what society is overwork people till they break down and, of course, pay them as little as possible because in a world where dollars and money, well, dollars are being printed by the millions each and every day since the 1970s, where's all the money, right? Like, why is, you know, why are people still living in poverty, right? So, the point about separation, well, it goes very, very deep. And, of course, I can't, you know, uh, put that much... You know, I don't want to create infinitely long videos. But school, again, is a very great propagator of separation because you have a dumb system that teaches people to be, you know, impulsive. 
it teaches people to follow only the way of the teacher in many cases because the teacher is the only person who can be right and ultimately they are also imposing their own way of judgment and thinking on the children which means destroying their discernment because ultimately they have been raised by a society in which discernment and speaking the truth are horrible. Because in a society this fake, it's obvious that the truth will always scare people. So when people live in lies, they will always live in separation. But they will play a game of staying together, just like two narcissistic people will always go so well together. They will always accompany the other by, you know, going on by those person's lies, right? They will, you know, those groups of people that everyone in there lies, right? And they just lie and lie and lie. When someone says something, I don't know if the other ones are aware that they are lying, but it's a competition who agrees with those the more, right? They're always seeking for the other person's attention. And that's how society in most of the parts exists. And when you have children that are pitted one against the other, you know, in this competition since a young age to get the best marks, they are not shown better things, more sensitive things, so technically they are again raised in a sick world which promotes competition. But this world has resources for everyone, if we use them wisely, so the question is, why would we have to suffer? Shouldn't we actually stop doing this to our children and to all the generations that come? Shouldn't we stop teaching them that, you know, teachers are some kind of gods and, you know, you always have to do what other people say? Shouldn't we actually stop this idea in which, you know, the older generations always have to impose their limitedness? Because the more you become an adult, the more you pre give up your inner child. And the more you do that, you're technically more and more a machine. That's why you see people nowadays incapable of emotions and all they claim is just stress. But stress is only a pinpoint of the pain that you're inflicting upon yourself. Now I will end up this video here because I don't want to make it too long. I will create several other videos on the topic most likely because this is a very broad topic. Feel free to Comment on the section below your points, your opinions. You are appreciated. Take care of yourselves. Ferenc Janbor signing out.